Steve, around Halloween, mm -hmm. we always like to talk about topics that are spooky. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of spooky topics out there, like, um, you know, ghosts. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, we could name all, all the fantasy monsters if ghosts, we want to. spirits, poltergeists. Now, people, it seems today that people don't, on the whole, believe in werewolves and vampires and Frankenstein's monster. But people believe in ghosts. They do. And, it's still very popular. And this is a thing that scam artists or people mm. that believe it yeah. will take advantage of other people to you know, basically providing entertainment to talk about, about ghosts. And we happen to have a, uh, you know, you in particular interacted with the Warrens, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. So first answer a couple of questions for me. Let's define what a ghost is. Yeah. So a ghost is typically conceptualized as the, the soul or the spirit of someone who has passed away, but their, but their spirit, for whatever reason, has chosen or is trapped on the physical plane, like mm -hmm. on, on earth. They are still connected here for some reason. Maybe they have to complete something. Yeah, unfinished yeah, business. Yeah, they have unfinished yeah. business that they have, to, they have to deal with before they could move on to a more permanent resting place. That's mm -hmm. the basic mythology yeah. of ghosts, who ghosts are. They tend to be attached to again in the mythology they tend to be attached to spooky places very old places very lonely places like um uh abandoned lighthouse, hospitals. lighthouses are, are, oh, are lighthouses common, yeah. yeah you can't go into lighthouses yeah. it's very dangerous <laughs> right or places where something traumatic happened a beat you know gettysburg you know mm -hmm. the field where thousands of people died um so that's that's the mythology uh, we, you know, we come from Connecticut, you know, we, we, we've been running a skeptical organization in Connecticut for, you know, almost 30 years. And, and so that the ghost hunting and belief in ghosts is very popular among the pseudosciences you know, in Connecticut out. in no small part due to the long careers of Ed and Lorraine Warren, mm -hmm. who were, you know, I think the original really famous ghost hunters, at least in the modern era. And they had a pretty profound career of giving lectures and yeah. talks and actually even being paid to get involved with real yeah. ghost hunting. And and then inspired movies, you yeah. know, Haunting well, in Connecticut, you know, the the Ragdoll, you know. Yeah. Um and the conjuring was actually Yeah, that's another the, one of the conjuring. Movie. So but you know, and, and it is very common for us to be contacted around Halloween to ask about Tell us about like the the White Lady of Union Cemetery, which is a local ghost legend, mm -hmm. and uh, and we we looked at of course a ton of so called evidence for ghosts when we were you know investigating the the Warrens, and um, now there's been a whole cottage industry of ghost hunting groups and entire this still boggles the mind you know entire shows dedicated to to ghost hunting. It always fascinates me that you could watch a show about nothing, right? Yeah, about nothing. something like they're never going to find. Like they're never going to find Bigfoot. They're never going to actually have, you know, evidence of a ghost. It's who, all in pursuit of. Yeah, like, it's all never, in pursuit There's of. never like a, yeah, and they do stupid things. It's and, all and, suggestion. And and some of them, you know, manufacture, you know, they'll they'll do that I've as heard well. stories of that, certainly. Um, so what, let's, let's talk a little bit about ghost hunting. Mm -hmm. you know, like what do they do and the types of evidence that they present because we're all about the evidence right if you can believe in ghosts or not believe in ghosts that good for you who cares but when you say i have evidence of ghosts now you're in our realm right you're in right. the realm of of science um so one type of evidence that is very very common is ghost photographs mm -hmm. uh you have a picture generally these are splotches of light on film right that's basically what they are uh, and over the years, ghost photographs have tracked very closely with photographic technology, right? Mm -hmm. Not by coincidence. Whatever the technology is being used at the time is amenable to certain kinds of artifacts that could get images or, or light or exposure on the film. And those are the ghosts, mm -hmm. right? Um, so a quick example, like yeah. people accidentally um, having their camera strap Mm -hmm. in the frame and it could be highly reflective right like if it's made out of plastic which a lot of old camera straps used to be yeah um, so and you could re you could reproduce that pretty much on demand yeah. like once you know about it it's just um if it, it requires a flash that's one of the red flags by the way of an artifact that it requires a flash and in fact on the warren's website at one point in time they said 
use a powerful flash. That's a good way to get ghost photographs. And then, of course, once we criticized that and pointed out that that's a great way to create fake ghost photographs, they took it down. They just quietly removed that. Yep. But yeah, because if you, you're producing the light, the light's reflecting off of something. It's reflecting off of dust particles or mm -hmm. it's some kind of lens flare effect or it's um, a, a camera strap, which doesn't have to be the camera strap. It could just be any close by object that you weren't aware of was there. It may not be even in the um, in the window that you're the, the, that you're viewing the picture on, but it's reflecting the flash from close up, and you mm -hmm. get a streak of light. Um, so now there's also like a the a double exposure, mm -hmm. which of course only happens with cameras that are capable of producing a double exposure, exactly right. Uh, or the um, the golden door effect, which is an artifact of a certain kind of camera that you know has you know that a doorway. Um, in, the in the camera, like the shutter, like yeah. a, a kind of a, a rectangular shutter. So this is pretty well established, you know, that you can reproduce all of these alleged ghost photographs um, very easily and that they are, in, they're, they're photographic artifacts mm -hmm. and they track with the technology that's being used quite demonstrably. Um, now, I think that yeah. historically, when you go back, if you search for ghost pictures online, you will eventually come up to to some very old ones that are famous. Yeah. You might not know that they're famous, but there are there are some, you know, ones that we see over and over again. I think a lot of them are fake. Yeah. Some of them are deliberately fake. Some are accidental double and exposures. And accidental, yeah. And some of them are pareidolia. Yeah. Right? So the ones where it's clearly a person, right? It's like, this is not just like the, a face in a tree. You know, this is clearly detailed picture of a ghostly human. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a, that's a classic double exposure and yeah. very easily reproduced, but you know, and again, some camera, camera technologies uh, lend itself to that. Um, if it's just like a splotch and you think you see a demonic face in the splotch, that's pareidolia, right? That's just seeing patterns in randomness, mm -hmm. uh, which again, people are also very, very good at. Um, what we don't see is, um, anything any scientific evidence. Mm -hmm. I've never seen an actual study where they tried to correlate um, the incidence of, of ghost-like images on film with anything that is potentially paranormal. Although my daughter and I did do that study, the only one that I'm aware of. Uh, we took hundreds of pictures in graveyards and hundreds of pictures in similar settings, but not in graveyards, that were places that have no reason to think that they're haunted. And the incidence of ghost-like artifacts on the film was the same mm -hmm. um, in the in the two settings. So I don't know if that proves anything, but for what it's worth, you know that's the kind of research. Like if you really were assigned a ghost hunting researcher, that's the kind of stuff you would do. Yeah. But we don't see that. Yeah. What ghost hunters do is they do they go anomaly hunting, and then whatever anomaly they find, they declare as a ghost phenomenon. That's mm -hmm. it. That's the extent of what they're doing, and that's not science. That's pseudoscience, right? That is literally what we call anomaly hunting rather that they're not hypothesis testing. Yeah. No, they're out there. Like they're basically creating scenarios which will produce anomalies. Like an example yeah. is like they, they have a, a tape recorder, you know, some recording device yeah. and you turn up the gain on it. Um, and what happens is a lot of background noise becomes apparent. Yeah. Um, if you've ever had the opportunity to, to like with a mixing board or, you know, certain devices, you can really turn up like how strongly the device will be recording sound or how sensitive it is. And Not only that, but sound carries a lot farther than we think. Yeah. So, so Evan and I, another member of our, of our group were involved with a investigating a local haunted restaurant. And one of the techniques that was used by the ghost hunters that we were working with was they had, we had a recording running, you know, all night. And what's interesting was we were like in an attic type space and there was like a little, you know, those little small windows, like for ventilation, ventilation window. Um, we could pretty clearly hear voices of people probably a couple of hundred yards away on the street. Mm -hmm. It just carried very well mm -hmm. because of the acoustics of the, of the location. And you would pick that up on the tape. But of course, you would think I'm alone in this room in in this building. There's nobody here. Where is where are those voices coming from? Mm -hmm. But if you, when you're physically in the space, you could see, yeah, it came from the street. Yeah. But you can't tell that if you're just listening to the to the tape. Yeah. So these sort of you know these voice phenomena are really not convincing as evidence because you could never validate where the noise came from. And again, a lot of it is 
just picking up voices you didn't know were in ambient, you know, in the area. And the, another one is is audio pareidolia. Mm-hmm. Like you're just hearing noise, and then you, your your brain is constantly trying to match noise to words. That's mm-hmm. what our brains do. That's how we interpret speech, right? And and you will hear snatches. This is like backward masking on albums, right? You will hear sounds that your brain forms into words Mm -hmm. and and they say that's a ghost right that's a ghost talking to you it's like no it's just the brain that's how the brain functions um another entire class of of ghost hunting evidence that they talk about is electromagnetic waves Mm -hmm. um so the these are you if you ever go online and buy a ghost hunting kit guarantee you there's going to be an em reader in there right electromagnetic detector um so why do ghosts give off electromagnetic radiation there's no reason to think that they do or hypothesize why they should. It's just that that's something that you can detect, mm-hmm. right? It, it's really just a matter of, you know, they're, you, they're sort of looking where the light is good, you know? Yeah. Um, so what, what frequency of electromagnetic radiation do, do ghosts produce? Whatever your e meter's reading, right? Mm-hmm. That's again, there's no reason to think that it would be one range or another range. Yeah, could be there's anything. no evidence that it's always in this range. This is the ghost range or whatever. It's just whatever you happen to be reading, that's the that's the the range that the ghosts get, apparently give So there's up. no consistency. There's, there's, no, there's yeah. no rhyme or reason. And, you know, any ghost hunter... And there's background radiation everywhere. Yeah. Right? Even just like iron yeah. will give give a reading. Like it doesn't have to be electronics. It's just metal, mm-hmm. you know, anything that's, that's ferromagnetic will do it. Uh, so people underestimate that, you know, the, the possible um, alternative sources of EM radiation. So again, again, a, what a scientist would do, we say, okay, we have an anomaly, right? So you detect an anomaly, cold, a sound, a picture on a photograph, a electromagnetic radiation. The ghost hunter says, goes from anomaly to ghosts to evidence that's the process yep we have an anomaly this is ghosts a scientist would then say all right here's a dozen hypotheses about what could be producing that sound Mm -hmm. that phenomenon whatever it is that anomaly now let's investigate them and see if we could distinguish among them and then rule things out one by one ghost hunters don't do that they just go oh anomaly ghost that's it Mm -hmm. you know we we make so many things that Ed Warren said to us during our, you know, our association with him. One of the things that's, that sticks with me is he said, you know, you can detect cold in these, you know, old abandoned houses. We call that ghost cold. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. it. He calls it ghost cold. I guess it's ghost cold then, right? Yeah, or it's, it's just a, you have a drafty old house. You it's know? A, you know, so he leaps to a ghost must be creating yeah. that, that lower temperature that they're experiencing. And, you know, look, when, you're, when you have no concept of science... Mm-hmm. And you have a mission, you know, you have a goal. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Or just a desire to believe in the fantastical, right? Yeah. This is entertainment, I think, for a lot of people. Absolutely. You know, and then the final question that we often get is like, well, what's the harm people believe in ghosts? I don't think I've ever been interviewed on this topic without somebody asking that. Who cares if people believe in ghosts? And my answer is like, I don't really care. It's not about that. What is What I do care about is people's understanding of science and mm-hmm. their ability to detect pseudoscience to tell the difference between science and pseudoscience because if people believe in ghosts be based upon pseudoscientific evidence that that in and of its that's the harm it's mm-hmm. the belief in pseudoscientific evidence it's confusing that with science that's the problem and then of course sometimes that does lead to you know pretty malicious con right you convince and and uh, someone that you know an older person that their spouse who died recently is manifesting to them because you're of these, you know, weak forms of evidence. And that somehow leads to them giving you a lot of money, you know, Mm -hmm. for the services that you're providing. And this happens all the time. Um, So even the benign true believers, though, they sort of create the situation where con artists can then take advantage. And of course, there's a lot of people who blur the lines between, you know, those two ends of the spectrum. So it isn't benign. There's a lot of, a lot of sometimes direct harm, but there's a lot of indirect harm. Like you're teaching people pseudoscience to believe in magic, et cetera. That is inherently dangerous in and of itself. Yeah, because they will apply it to other parts of their life. Yes. You know, like it's an approach to reality, right? Yeah. It's not, yep, so again, it's the belief in ghosts itself. Yeah, I agree. It's usually benign and who cares? But it's understanding how science works and not confusing what's happening on ghost hunting shows 
with science, mm -hmm. right? That's that's what we care about. And they, you know, they they do come off a little sciency. They it's know? deliberate. It's yeah. pseudo science. They are pretending to do science, yep. but they don't understand the first thing about how science actually functions. Yep. Uh, so that, that's, again, that's what our involvement is with, you know, scientific skepticism, critical thinking. It's like, no, this is not real science. Again, believe what you want, but this is not real science. And here's why. And that's important to explain to people. And I think another important point too, is that people, um, like believing in ghosts folds nicely into believing in an afterlife, mm -hmm. which connects you to religions, right? So mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Christianity as an example, you know, there's like a, a rich afterlife in that in that mythology. Yeah, I think for some people, again, this doesn't matter in terms of like whether it's science or pseudoscience, but for some people, it's like if there's scientific evidence for ghosts, then there's scientific evidence for everything that they believe, mm -hmm. all the things that follow in behind that, right? Whatever their religious beliefs are, they could say, well, there's evidence. We know that it exists. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a powerful motivation. But of course, that those people though are very vulnerable to being exploited because they have a powerful, mm -hmm. you know, motivation. Uh, and again, you can believe whatever you believe about the ultimate nature of reality. Nobody knows, and we don't really get involved with that. But, but just don't say there's scientific evidence yeah. if there isn't. Right. Yeah, and there, so there are a few um, scams and charlatans that are associated with this. Like you know, of course, we have people who speak to the dead mm -hmm. that are speaking to ghosts. Now they don't usually show up with ghost pictures and things like that. They just you know, they, they they pretend that they are communing with dead people on yeah. some level. Although that's mediumship, right? Or the spiritual movement. Mm -hmm. And although it did start with physical manifestations, you know, that so the be, now we're going into like the Harry Houdini like seances and all that yeah. era with seances. That was very much part, you know, the 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 at that point in time, you know, the late 19th, early, early 20th century, the seance medium phenomenon spiritualism movement was built upon seances and other interactions with with clients where the, it was all about the physical manifestations mm -hmm. it was about the rapping noises and the floating objects and whatever and this is all just stage magic yeah. right that they yeah. were using and harry houdini as a magician was like no this is not evidence of life after death you're doing cheap magic tricks and i'm going to prove it and he did it and he basically went run around debunking every spiritualist they could not get away with their magic tricks in the person in, in the presence of a world famous magician mm -hmm. uh so that that's what that was about and so <clears throat> the medium spiritualism movement evolved into no physical manifestations mm -hmm. because then there was nothing to debunk that's right and it's all happening in the mind yeah right so now it was it's just safe. it's yeah it's it's just talk mm -hmm. because then you because you're not opening yourself up to um being definitively debunked like if you're faking a physical manifestation you could be proven to be committing fraud if you're if it's just all talk it's all the perception it's all in the mind of the beholder right so uh that's it, that's how that evolved it's fun to watch you can go on youtube and find videos where people show you like how seances are faked mm -hmm. and all the, the the things that they do and it's so ridiculous when you see the tricks that yeah. they're doing and the way that they're pulling it off I mean, to people who are more likely to believe in these things, it could be very impressive and, and be impactful. Yeah. But, you know, when you see a magician doing it, it, it really is silly. It's like, it's but like all magic is silly. Yeah. Like, even if you, you know, if you, you know, the, the best stage magicians that are out there, you know, like we interviewed David Copperfield, you mm -hmm. know, for example. And he, I love what he says. He said, magic is in the fact that nobody would ever believe that you would spend that much time think you know working on something that stupid yeah like all magic tricks are like at at their ultimately they're very very stupid little things it's just that you you know figured out how to do it in a certain way that nobody would think of yeah you know um and but it could be very impressive like if you see you know really really top tier stage magicians what they do it can be mind-blowing but they're all silly, stupid tricks yeah. at the end of the day. Now, some of them could be complicated. You know, I know yeah. like Penn and Teller have complicated ways that they got to their effect. Um, and I, I, every once in a while, I'd watch the mask magician on YouTube. Mm -hmm. you ever see that guy? He revealed himself, by the way. Oh, yeah. I just saw that. <laughs> but anyway, you know, they had some things that were not, that were pretty complicated yeah. that they pull. But it is one step after another. Like, you know, yeah. they had this woman that goes into a, 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 a like a big milk crate thing or, or mm -hmm. a barrel filled with liquid, right? So they go in, they put the top on. And 
Now you think from an engineering perspective, woman goes in there, she fits in there physically, they put the top on. Now what's happening? She has to be breathing somehow. So they, so she is, they have an air tube yeah. that she's breathing with. And then they have a pump where they're draining the water out of that. You know, mm-hmm. like it's a series of steps that they're doing. And, and if you come at magic from an engineering perspective, it kind of helps you think like, well, what would you have to do in order to pull that off? Right. And, you know, and that's basically scientists are using engineering concepts to come up with ways to trick you. I saw a magician do something so cool, Steve. <laughs> he took a poker chip and he drops it from top hand to the bottom hand and it falls down. And then, and then it just looks like the poker chip flies right back up into his top hand. You know what he was doing is he wedges the poker chip in between yeah, this and muscle squeeze. and he squeezes it and it and, flips up. Yeah. But you can't see him do it because he just moves his hand just a little bit. Yeah. But the effect is unbelievably powerful. And it, all it is is him literally squeezing it and, and, and flipping it with his right. palm. It's right. very impressive though. Some magician, like I bet accidentally like, oh, I... I right. flipped it. I oh flipped boy, you might have spent a month figuring out how to do that. That's the thing. They spend so much time figuring out what, something that is of no value except it can create the illusion of something amazing yeah. happening. The, the, I, always, I always think of the trick like when we were kids, we learned this. Like literally like six, seven years old. You take like a matchbox, right? Mm-hmm. And you put it on your the back of your hand with the top side down and you close it so that it pinches your skin a little bit. And then you say, look, I could make it levitate. And you go like this and it levitates because you're squeezing and it's tightening the skin and lifting it up. Yeah. It's such a simple, stupid thing. A kid could learn it, yep. but it's, um, but if you don't know what's happening, it looks like magic. Definitely. Yeah. And that's, again, that's also a lot of that. That was, so that's, was at the core of the spiritualism movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's, we're basically in the mentalism phase because mentalism is also magic and it also uses tricks, mm-hmm. but it's all in your mind. There's no physical aspect to it. Although there might be, there might be combined with with like drawing or picking cards or whatever. But yep. you know, mental it may have props, but mentalism is it's the mental deception that's happening, and that's that's what ghost hunting really all is. Definitely, it's, it's that and just confusing raw belief with actual science. Mm-hmm. But it's it's nothing scientific about it at all. Without a doubt. I mean, I guess the final word here is that after all these years of people looking for ghosts and saying that they have proof and everything. There, any any proof that is scrutinized evaporates. evaporates. Yeah, evaporates. they're just chasing their tail. They're making no progress. Yeah. It's almost as if it's not real and they're just deceiving themselves. Go and figure. Yeah. <laughs>